This video is on the molar volume of hydrogen gas lab. And so what we're looking at is trying to find experimentally the volume per mole ratio of hydrogen gas. The units for that is in fact liters per mole. You've seen that when you've seen the, the um, STP conditions of 22.4 liters per one mole. We're trying to experimentally determine that at STP conditions. Um, so what we have is there's many, many components to this lab. There's a stoichiometry aspect, there's a Dalton's aspect to it, and then there's a little bit of something new to us, which is the idea of corrected volume. And we also have combined gas law. So this is a multi-concept lab, which is really great for the critical thinkers that we are. So we have here, if just to remind you of the setup, we took a piece of magnesium, we put it in our copper cage, and we poured some HCl into our graduated cylinder, and then we buffered it with a little water to make sure that the reaction doesn't put, take place immediately. We capped it, and then we inverted it into a water bath. The minute that gets inverted, the hydrochloric acid, which is more dense, the solution is more dense, will then sink down to the bottom, exposing itself to the magnesium, and of course reacting, forming hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. This is the reaction that you see. And of course, it's a balanced chemical reaction. Now, notice how this is an aqueous substance and so it oftentimes is in the form of a solution. So it's volume with a certain concentration. This solid can be easily masked out using the ratio, or the ratio of how many grams per one centimeter of that magnesium ribbon. That was pre-calculated for you. And we said that there was 0 0.017 grams per centimeter. And each of those strips that you, you reacted were one centimeters. So if you look at this, we hope that this is our, our, our excess reactant and this is our limiting reactant. And we can actually compute that if you were to multiply these two, you get your millimoles. So if you multiply 25 times two, you get 50, which is 50 millimoles. And then you take the grams and divide it by its molar mass, which is 24.31. And of course, you want it in millimoles divided by a thousand as well. So 50 compared to this really small number, which is point zero 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 a couple quite a few zeros, nine eight moles, millimoles, that tells you that magnesium is definitely the linear reactant. And you want magnesium to be the linear reactant. Because how much magnesium reacts will tell you how many moles of hydrogen forms from that. So the idea is to try to get to moles of hydrogen from the grams of magnesium that you reacted. Now, that will give you the moles of hydrogen up here. So really, the stoichiometry will get you the moles of hydrogen. Now we need the volume. To get the volume is to use the combined gas law, which requires a lot of other components. So let's talk about Dalton's law, how it's involved in this reaction. So the hydrogen, or hydrogen gas that you mainly collect over water is really going to be composed of hydrogen and water, some water, mostly mainly hydrogen. So to find the pressure of hydrogen, that's what you're looking for, you must subtract the total ambient pressure from, or subtract the vapor pressure from the total ambient pressure to get the partial pressure of hydrogen. Again, the same thing here where, no, well, it's not again the same thing. It's a different idea here, but you're again trying to get hydrogen's volume. Now mo main, most of the time when we read the meniscus of any liquid, we're reading it right side up in terms of the instrument we're measuring. Because the instrument that we're measuring called the graduated cylinder has been inverted, now you have to account for your reading of your meniscus because usually the inverted volume is what you really wanted you would really want. And so you're really gonna, you're gonna subtract that difference from the meniscus, that little extra volume from the, menis, from the lack of the meniscus um, into the volume of the hydrogen gas. 
Now, after you have the volume of the hydrogen gas, then you will then plug your volume of the dry gas, which is hydrogen gas here in the ambient condition, and also for the volume of the hydrogen gas here from the corrected volume, and then the temperature of the hydrogen gas. And then you're gonna ratio it out to the STP conditions, which is 760 millimeters of mercury as far as pressure, and then temperatures 270 Kelvin. So let's do the pre-lab. The pre-lab, we're actually gonna put some numbers in here and we'll see it in action. So I just wanted to review the concept. Now let's do the pre-lab. So get out, the pre-lab questions has a lot of numbers involved in it. So we have some data to work off of. Um, so here you have your units of volume, molar volume, which is liters per mole. That's our main unit that we're trying to achieve. We start off with magnesium and it's given to us in the pre-lab question, make sure you read that, the, that setup first, that you have 0 0.028 grams of magnesium and it says that there's an excess amount of hydrochloric acid. You're going to try to get to moles of hydrogen. So again, you're just doing some stoichiometry. One mole of magnesium has 24 0.31 grams of magnesium and then you ratio it out with hydrogen so one mole of hydrogen gas has one mole for every one mole of magnesium and that will then give you the moles of hydrogen gas and I calculated this and I determined the moles to be 0 0.0012 moles of magnesium so we've got what we want as far as moles of magnesium. I'm going to put that same value in here just to remind myself. Or sorry, um, my apologies, hydrogen gas. This is the moles of hydrogen gas. Okay. Notice the unit cancellation leading to the moles of hydrogen gas. Now in the problem, it tells you the ambient. By the way, this is the moles at ambient condition. We're also going to find the, the moles of hydrogen ga gas at ambient conditions as well. Um, ambient in this case is, um, for this problem, it doesn't tell you what the ambient temperature is. So I'm going to tell you right now, and you need to make sure you note it, that it's 25 degrees Celsius. That's the ambient temperature. So A and B. Okay. So now it says right here that you, the total pressure was given to us as 740, the barometric pressure, they call it barometric, which is the ambient pressure is for or 746. Um, and then, of course, we have to subtract the vapor pressure to get the partial pressure of hydrogen gas. And I looked up the water temperature. Because you're collecting it over a, a water bath, the water temperature will determine the vapor pressure of the water inside in the gases that are collected. So I looked up the water temperature, and it stated that the water temperature is about 20 two degrees Celsius water bath temperature. And so the vapor pressure at that temperature is 19.8. Subtract that, you will get the partial pressure of hydrogen gas to be 726.2 millimeters of mercury. Now let's talk about the corrective volume and we're also gonna convert it to liters as well. So we're looking at the ambient volume. So whatever you read as far as your meniscus when it was inverted was 31 milliliters, 31.0 milliliters. But now you correct for that because of the inverted meniscus. So then now it is 30.8 milliliters. Now I'm going to convert that to liters right off the bat as well. So. I'm going to take a thousand milliliters in one liter and I will get the movement of three spaces over. So I get 0 0.0308 liters. Okay. Now I go and finish it up. So I put all this information. I'm going to put, this is my ambient volume of my hydrogen gas. This is my partial pressure of my hydrogen gas at ambient condition. And, um, and then my ambient temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. 
So 25 degrees Celsius plus uh, 273 is 298. The volume, corrected volume, is 0 0.0308. So I'm putting all my ambient condition information here. And then my corrected partial pressure of hydrogen after you remove water out of it is 726.2 millimeters of mercury. So I have all my ambient condition information. Now I want to find the volume at, so this is my question mark, at STP conditions, and STP conditions is when pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and temperature is 273. And I want to make sure I match up my units, okay? Kelvin, Kelvin, millimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury, and liters, liters. So I'm going to use chart, uh, the combined gas law to figure this out. So setting up the combined gas law, which is right here, P1, oops. V1 T1 and then I'm going to ratio it to its STP conditions which is 760 mmHg and then volume is what I'm looking for so the volume at STP conditions volume hydrogen gas and then 273 so now, once I solve for my volume of my hydrogen gas at STP condition, I can then substitute it into my ratio of volume to moles. So now I, when I solve this, I get 0 0.0270 liters. So this is my final step. My final step is to find molar volume. And molar volume, like we said earlier, is a ratio. It's a ratio of liters two moles. So it's dividing those two. So my liters of hydrogen gas at STP condition is, and this is all at STP conditions. So the liters is 0 0.0270 liters. The moles, if you recall, is of hydrogen gas is 0 0.0012 moles. When you divide those two numbers, you will see a very familiar number or a number that's similar to that familiar number. So 22.5 liters per mole. And this is what happens at STP conditions. This is how we experimentally determine this. I hope this all helps. Um, uh, please, let me please let me know if you have any questions in class. So this is your pre-lab questions.